Camel toes and visible. Camel toes and visible nipples with a body positive message. Stick around, I have a lot to say. Hello friends, thanks for clicking. I'm the Pink Veggie. If you're into health, fitness and looking your best, please subscribe for weekly videos. So Exotic Athletica, um, they are a small activewear label based in Queensland, Australia. If you're Australian female and in the market for activewear, you've probably heard about Exotic Athletica or Exotica. They do a lot of social media marketing and it's something that they're very good at, so you've probably heard of them. Um, there's a lot of hype surrounding them from their loyal customers, but are they worth it? Let's have a look. So for the purpose of this video, I'm only talking about their activewear pieces, so their tights and crops. The tights have different um, lengths and waist styles, some have pockets, some don't. Uh, and their crops. Their crops come in three styles. They're um, a scoop neck, reversible and teaback. Have you tried them? Haven't you tried them? Are you thinking of trying them? If not, I'm going to go through some pros and cons with you today. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this label. Um, not really hate, but I'm a bit more picky than the usual customer, I suppose, because of my background. My background is in fashion design, so I do have a lot of knowledge about fabrics, um, garment construction methods, and um, grading, pattern making, uh, that sort of thing. I'll do the cons first, so I can end on a positive note later. So first up, they're an online brand. There's no stores to try on. If you're a person who needs to try on, you might need to go through a couple of exchanges to get your right sizes and styles. So I'm not sure, but I do believe that in the beginning, when they first started up, they were manufactured in Australia. Now they've been around for a while, but their growth lately um, I would think, it seems like to me to an outsider, but the growth lately has seemed pretty phenomenal. Now, as the company has expanded, they're now manufactured in China. Some people think they are manufactured in Australia because they're an Australian owned brand, but they're not. And they do catch some flack from being Chinese made. For me, this is not really a con. Large scale garment manufacture is not something that Australia does well. A lot of people say they like to buy Australian made, but the price difference is just not worth it and people don't put their money where their mouth is. So companies are forced to go overseas for manufacture. This is not, as I said, this is not really a con for me, it's just a fact of business. However, I do find that they're very cheaply made. They're very basic constructions. I've got a pair of tights here to show you what I mean. This is overlocking. Turn any garment inside out, you'll find this. It's pretty much, it's, it's technically acceptable to put stretch garments together with overlocking only. That's fine, they're not gonna come apart or anything. However, it has become the industry norm to use flat locking. I have a pair of different brand leggings here. This is the outside. Flat locking is this seam. It kind of looks like overlocking, but it's on the outside. And inside it's flat, there's no seam poking up, hence the name flat locking. The reason for flat locking seams is it just gives the seams a bit more um, strength and lets things lie flatter. You can see these have flat locking all over. You can even buy relatively cheap um, home flat locking machines these days. So some home made tights that I see on sewing groups um, look better made than the exotic athletica ones. I see people comment on their ads about the print whiteout. Um, so what this means is when things are stretched, the print fades like that. Um, people complain about this, but for me, it's not really a con as well. It's just a fact of how things are made. I'm putting up on screen a diagram of knit fabrics. So basically it's got all these rows of knitting very very fine you can't see it unless you really really look and so basically and so basically things are printed on a white background with the print over the top and as things are stretched these rows of knitting separate and you can see the white background in between that's not really avoidable unless you do a different style of printing they have done some ranges in the different style of printing but as they have themselves explained the choice of colours is not as great as with the traditional style of printing. 
So some people see this as a con, but for me it's not really. I just thought I had to address it. There are also a lot of comments on the ads about the camel toe look. On the pattern tights it's not as bad, but on the plain ones you do get the effect. I don't think it's really a camel toe, it just kind of looks like it. And I think it's down to where they've put this seam on their pants. This top bit is a lot wider than other pants that I have. I'm not sure why they've done the wider band with the lower seam. Um, it's probably just to be a bit more flattering on the belly. Uh, it's not really a camel toe, I don't think. It just kind of looks like it because of where this sits on the body. Kind of accentuates it. But if you want to avoid that, I'd go for the pattern. Another thing they've got flack about is for the crop tops. I've got one on now. Um, they don't have removable bra cups. For me, for the price they charge, they really should include removable bra cups. Most people will take them out, but it gives you the option not to. And what this would avoid is what people complain about is that you can see your nipples. One of the first ones I bought from them was a plain pink and it, it is pretty obvious. Um, so to avoid this also, I'd go the pattern. Without the removable bra cups too, for the smaller busted people, um, they can be rather fl uh, flattening. I do think it's a brand that is geared towards more the larger ladies. Um, so it's not something they care about being um, flattened out. But if you've got not much up top, you kind of just end up looking like a 10 year old boy. It really wouldn't take much or add much cost for them to manufacture with removable bra cups. I mean, even my very, very cheapest Kmart crop tops come with removable bra cups. The tights do roll down. People complain on their ads when they roll down and they, they are very responsive and getting back to people saying, oh, you might have the wrong fit, you might have the wrong size. Um, return them or contact us and we'll advise you how to avoid the roll down. And my dog's barking. I like this sort of waistband because it gives less of a muffin top. So for me, that's also not really a con, but I had to address it. So for me, some roll down is unavoidable and other style tights with the same waistband does the same thing. Something else I have to address is the overhyping of certain features. Um, this probably bugs me because of my background. I don't think they're trying to mislead people and they are trying to sell their own garments, obviously. So they do some hyping. But for me, it's just a bit, bit much. Things they say are really good features are not. They're just standard. One thing they mentioned once was... Uh, Oh, they stay the tights stay up because of the V shaping. I'll put some put some photos on the screen. So what they mean is how this top waistband shapes in. So you can see from the hip, the waistband goes up at an angle. It's not just a rectangle, so it V's in. And they say this keeps them up, but every pair of every pair of tights that I have with the yoga band does the same thing. So it's not really a feature that's unique to them. Something else they've said that really bugs me is about their crop tops. Um, they were saying something and, oh, it's double lined. And my little sewing ears pricked up and I'm like, double lined? I've never noticed this. What are they talking about? Um, so then they said, oh, yeah, it's got an inside and an outside. That's not double lined. That's lined. Um, you couldn't really make a crop top that's not lined. Um, so this is an example. So this, this is the outer. This is the inner. You couldn't do it without a lining. I've got... One of my very cheap Kmart crop tops here. This is the outside, this is the inside. So you can see the front is lined. Even the cheapest, cheapest crop tops are lined. And it's not double lined. So I don't know if this is down to the inexperience of the people who are making the videos. They just get anyone to do a video on their new products who are free that day and um, try to sell and hype up their garments as best they can. And there's been a few other cases of things like that, which I've just thought, really? Really? If you don't know what I know, then you'll probably think, oh, that's amazing, I'll get Exotica, because they're different, but they're not. And so the crop tops are really not a sports bra. They're not marketed as a sports bra. The company actually says, stop wearing bras, wear our crop tops, they're a lot more comfortable. Um, so, I couldn't really fault them on this, but uh, I think a lot of people would buy them to wear as a sports bra, just not realising. 
a lot of ladies love them and live in them apparently but you do get the comments from other ladies who are like I've got big boobs and I could not do this that's just not supportive or shaping as they are marketed by Exotica they are a crop top not a sports bra so I wouldn't try to wear them for high impact activities so some of the pros so I believe a lot of their popularity as a label comes from the fact that they are very body positive and they probably have the largest range of sizes in an activewear label that I've ever seen. So their sizes go from an extra small to an extra extra large. The extra small is supposed to be a size 4, the small is supposed to be a size 6 to 8 with the extra extra large going up to a size 26. Um, their sizes are very generous though. There is no way in hell that I'm a 6 to 8. I'm usually a 10. So one great thing about this brand is they use a wide range of body sizes and shapes in their social media advertising and also on their website. I do hate it when I see companies use the traditional type of model and people will comment, oh, use a real woman. Um, I hate this sort of comment because all women are real women. Um, it's just that those ones are smaller than average. Um, so I do hate that comment. But Exotica do use a lot of real women. Um, Instagram influencers, people who are active on social media. Um, like I said, people of all different shapes and sizes. And a shout out to my sister giving me her photos to use on this video. You can find the links for her socials down below in the description. So one big plus with this label is... Um, the sizing and fit is very consistent. Um, if you've ever gone into a shop or bought something online, if it's from the same shop or the same label, um, and you get two garments that are basically pants, pants, and they fit entirely differently, and you need an entirely different size. Uh, that's because most labels now will go to China, there's a factory, the factory has pants made up, they go, I want that one and that one, and they just put their labels on there, and they're all totally different sizes. That's why there's so much inconsistency in sizing when buying from other stores or labels. With Exotica, with their activewear pieces, they've only got basically two fabrics that they manufacture in. There's the, um, the performance and the body contour. So traditionally what small labels would do before um, the whole um, just go to China and pick a pair of pants from a factory, what they do is do their pattern making off patterns called blocks. So they'd have one block for a pair of tights, one block for a crop top, and any design that they come up with for a new pair of pants or a crop, they use that one pattern and alter it. So it's got a very um, reliable and consistent fit. This combined with the fact that they only use two fabrics, they have the performance fabric and the body contour fabric, this means that um, it is a very consistent and predictable fit, which is a good thing when you're buying online. So once you've figured out what fabric and what cut you like, it's pretty easy to keep on buying um, and be happy with the sizes. They probably have the best range of prints in an activewear label that I've seen. Um, they bring out new prints cons constantly, like all the time they've got new prints. For me, for the quality of the garments, they are overpriced, sorry, but they are. But they do have really good sales and they have sales very often. So um, you'd be silly to buy at full price, always wait for a sale. So given all that, <laughs> So given all that, for me in conclusion, I really do view them as an athleisure brand, not as a serious um, athletic wear brand. I do buy items from them, obviously. I love the choice of prints and all the colours available. Um, I prefer the crop tops. Uh, I don't, the tights are fine, but there are a lot of other brands that I prefer for tights. I usually only buy if there's a print that I really, really like, um, not for really any other reason. Um, not for quality or fit or function, um, just if there's a, a print that I really like. Whereas other brands I buy because I know that uh, the quality and the fit and the compression is really amazing. This is my review for today. I hope you find it useful. If you liked it, give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you next week. I do have one pet peeve that I can't really make the video without mentioning. Um, the lady who owns the company, her whole life is based around activewear and making and selling gym wear and she squats on the smith machine and i can't forgive that i'm sorry please don't squat in the smith machine don't